This earth is beautiful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, بَعَدْ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ أَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَتُصْبِحُ الْأَرْضُ مُخْضَرَّةً إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَطِيفٌ خَبِيرٌ Do you not see that Allah has sent down rain from the sky and the earth becomes green? Indeed, Allah is subtle and He is all acquainted. SubhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala tells us that He makes this earth lush, green, rich and abundant. And subhanAllah, the earth has another incredible property that Allah Ta'ala describes when He says, when He commands us, وَلَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدَ إِصْلَاحِهَا Allah says, do not cause corruption upon the earth after its reformation. Now this can be understood in a number of ways, but one interpretation is that subhanAllah, when we take from the earth, when we use its resources, subhanAllah, it's amazing that the earth has this incredible ability to, you could say, bounce back from any sort of abuse that we take from it. Our job is to let it come back, allow it to self-correct, allow nature to take its course, that we do not corrupt that process. This is the gift that Allah Ta'ala has given us. This beautiful green earth that even when we take from it, subhanAllah, it keeps coming back, giving us more and more and more blessings. And our objective is don't corrupt that process. Give it enough of a chance to keep providing for you and feeding for you. Yes, this self-healing earth is a gift that we should not take for granted. In fact, we should do ihsan towards it. We should be excellent towards it. As Allah says, وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ And do good, be excellent as Allah has been excellent to you. وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَادْ فِي الْأَرْضِ And do not seek corruption in the land. Do not seek to corrupt this land. Indeed, Allah does not like the corruptors. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُفْسِدِينَ Allah does not like those who corrupt. And so, we need to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has charged us to be what? Khulafa'ul ard To be the khalifa, you could say the vicegerents, the representatives. A khalifa, what does it mean? One of the definitions is that when there is a ruler, that ruler leaves somebody as his representative in a certain area and say, you're going to represent me. You take care of things on my behalf. And so this is the position. It's we are exercising whatever authority that we have been granted and given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the objective of representing Allah's laws on this earth. So what should we do? How should we behave? What should we take care of, of this amazing planet that we've been given? We should focus on what? Making sure that we protect its purifying and clean water. Why? Because water is the thing that purifies. It's the thing that takes care of cleanliness. And the Prophet said what? At-tuhuru shatru al-iman. Cleanliness is half of faith. So clearly, water holds a very important role. Furthermore, water is not something that anybody can just keep for themselves, privatize, and say, no, this only belongs to me. Rather, as the Prophet says, what? Al-Muslimuna shuraka'u fi thalathin, that the believers have a common share in three things. Al-Kala'i wal-Ma'i wa nari In grazing land, you have to allow open pastures for people to graze. You have to have what? Al-ma' water, it's for the people, and al-nar. You can't privatize fire. That, you know, you have to share it with others and allow them to benefit as well. We know that the Prophet ﷺ forbade the pollution of water and water resources. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ said to stay away from and guard yourself and protect yourself from being somebody who is cursed. And then obviously you wonder, who are these people that are cursed? And he defined one of them as... Al-Baraza fil Mawarid, the one who relieves himself in water sources. Now I want you to think about this. How much can one person with their own body corrupt a water source? Whatever amount you may you know, think. But then think about us today. Think about us today when we have companies, when we have factories, not polluting the amount of one person's body, two people. No, no, we're talking about pumping out all sorts of toxins that pollute our water resources. And meanwhile, we know that the Prophet is saying, what? Don't pollute your water resources. And furthermore, he says, he commands us, لا يبولن أحدكم في الماء الدائم none of, none of you should urinate in stagnant water. Flowing water, moving water has a natural means of purifying itself. But stagnant water is going to become corrupted. It's going to fester. And so subhanAllah, when we look at the world today and we see that so many companies are pumping all sorts of filth and garbage into the water and it's corrupting the water. It's, not, it's so much that the earth can't keep up and can't do islah and, and, and reform itself and purify itself because it's too much uh, greed and too much corruption. SubhanAllah, this is something that the Muslim, the believer should be concerned about. 
Are we representing ourselves as Khulafa, Khulafa al Ard? We should respect water so much that subhanAllah, the Prophet once came across Sa'ad anhu, who was making wudu. And he said to him, Ma saraf? What are you doing? You're wasting water. He was making wudu and just using so much. And Sa'ad was shocked about this. He thought, well, you know, wudu is ibadah. So the more and more I do, the better and better it is, isn't it? I should just keep on going, take my time, keep on using more water. I thought it was a good thing. He says, what? Afil wudu israf? There's actually wasting in wudu? I thought that was, I could use as much as I wanted. The Prophet ﷺ, listen to this response. The Prophet ﷺ says what? Na'am wa in kunta ala nahrin jarin. Yes, even if you're on the bank of a flowing river. Even if you're at the bank of a flowing river, you should only take and use what you need. Why? The water keeps on flowing. Day and night it just keeps going, keeps pouring. It doesn't matter if I use a little bit or if I use a lot. What difference does it make? SubhanAllah, you see in the wisdom of this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us something so beautiful and so powerful. That even if you consider this resource to be abundant, even if you feel that there is so much coming, don't develop the habit. Don't become the type of person that is wasteful in nature that just keeps using and using and using. You use what you need and then you stop, even if the resources are abundant, even if the flow just keeps going. How did the Prophet ﷺ teach us to deal with animals? We know that SubhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ told us what? دَخَلَتْ إِمْرَأَةٌ النَّارْ فِي هِرَّةٍ That there was a woman that she was entered into the fire because of one cat. She tied it up, she didn't feed it, nor did she allow it to go roam free and get its own food. So eventually the cat died. That was an evil of enough deed that she was entered into the fire. And in a different hadith, the Prophet says what? أَنَّ رَجُلًا رَأَى كَلْبًا يَأْكُلُ الثَّرَى مِنَ الْعَطْشِ That there was a, was a man who once saw a dog, he was chewing at the earth because it had some moisture in it. Just to get a, because he was so thirsty, he had no other water resource. He would just bite on the earth and see what it could get. So this man, he went down, we all know this famous story, he went down, took a, a shoe full of water, gave it to the animal to drink, and this was enough that Allah appreciated so much that this entered this man into paradise. What are these ahadith teaching us? Take a step back and think about this. If one animal can make the difference between heaven and hell, then what about the way we treat the environment which hosts all animals, which takes care of all animals? How much more so is it the believer's responsibility to feel that pressure and that need and that desire to take care of this beautiful planet of ours. Even when we slaughter, even when we are going to eat animals, what is the objective? The Prophet says what? In Allah katab al-ihsana ala kulli shay, fa idha qataltum fa ahsinu al-qitla, wa idha dhabahtum fa ahsinu al-dhabh. That the Prophet says what? Allah has enjoyed excellence on everything. Try to do excellence in everything. So when you kill, you kill in a good way. And when you slaughter, you slaughter in the best way. What does this mean? So you should sharpen your knife very sharp and let the animal die comfortably. Take it to an area, calm it down, lie it down, and slaughter quickly. Don't show it the blade. Don't show it other bodies of other animals that you slaughtered. These are the various sunan of the Prophet ﷺ showing excellence towards animals even when you have to kill one. We know that the Prophet ﷺ was once in an expedition with the Sahaba. And you can imagine they're camping out in a certain area, they see a tree, one of the Sahaba, they say, hey, well look, there's a nice bird nest, it has some baby birds, they go grab the baby birds, they think, oh, it's beautiful, I want to hold on to it, it's cute. The mama bird starts panicking. What does the Prophet say? Man faja'a hadhi bi waladiha? Who has caused this mama bird, this bird to get so scared and grieve for its young little child? Uruddu waladaha ilayha. Return the child to it. Just the thought, of the mama bird panicking about the baby bird, this is unacceptable. No, put it back. Don't just for fun, for play, you know, oh, I'm just going to make it cry and that's okay. I'm going to make it scream and panic and I'm okay with that. No, have some mercy in your heart. This is the quality of the believer. You care about the environment around you. And in that same hadith, it mentions how then when they were traveling as an expedition, when they camped in a certain area, they didn't realize that they were on top of an ant hill. And so the ants got all over them and it bothered them. They took a hot iron and they stuck it in the ant hole trying to kill it. Kill these ants. And the Prophet said, What? Nobody should punish with fire except the Lord of fire. Only Allah Ta'ala has the right to punish with fire. Everybody else, not even an ant, whether it be a bird, whether it be an ant, it doesn't matter how small of a creature it is, show some mercy. This is the quality of the believer. We know that we are not allowed to use animals just for target practice. Because the Prophet forbade us and said, لا تتخذوا شيئاً فيه الروح غرضاً Don't make any living thing, anything that has a ruh, that has a soul, anything that's alive, don't make it your target practice. Don't just shoot at it for fun, injuring it and laughing about it. This goes to show a lack of mercy, 
a lack of empathy in your heart. This is not the quality of the believer. And subhanAllah, this sense of responsibility towards the world around us, this sense of responsibility for even the animals around us, subhanAllah, it was exhibited even in the Khilafah of Umar anhu, when he made this beautiful quote that was recorded in history. What did he say? He famously said, لو أن جملا هلك بشط الفرات لخشيت أن أن يسأل أن يسألني الله عنه. That he says, if a camel dies on the shore of the Euphrates, I fear that Allah will ask me about it. Imagine he's in Medina and he's the Khalifa, and he's thinking all the way in the Euphrates. If there's one camel that dies over there, I might be held responsible. Allah might ask me, did you provide enough for the people? Did you make sure you took care of their wealth? Did that animal have enough food? Did you make the world safe enough for these people? Why did that animal die on your behalf? He's worried about even the animals under his authority. SubhanAllah. We have to ask ourselves, do we have that same impression, that same idea, even within our, in our own backyards? Do we have the same concern for the animals around us? And this even extends to plants. Yes, indeed, even to plants. We know that the Prophet ﷺ told us that anybody who cultivates land, مَنْ أَحْيَا أَرْضًا مَيْتَةً فَلَهُ بِهَا أَجْرٌ وَمَا أَكَلَهُ الْعَوَافِ مِنْهَا فَهُوَ لَهُ صَدَقَةً There are multiple narrations about this. Anybody who cultivates a land or anybody who plants a tree, they're going to have the reward of everything, every creature. doesn't matter if it's a bird, an animal, uh, 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 doesn't matter if it's a person. Whatever eats from this, whatever benefits from this, they get the sadaqah for it. They get ajr for it. They get rewarded for bringing the life of bringing the earth back to life, subhanAllah. And this attitude of the believer isn't dependent on uh, success or failure. This is the quality that naturally should come from the believer. How do we know this? Because the Prophet said, what? In qamat is sa'atu wa fi yadi ahadikum fasilatun fa in istata'a an la taquma hatta yagrisaha fal yagrisha. That if the final hour comes while you have even a shoot of a plant in your hands, and it's still possible for you to plant it before the hour comes, you should plant it. SubhanAllah, imagine this. Imagine you, a meteor hits the earth and there's a tidal wave coming. You only have two minutes to live, but you're holding on to a plant. First of all, how many of us ever hold on to plants and have this attitude of planting and, and growing? And we usually don't do these things. But SubhanAllah, the believer should be the one who wants to make the world a more beautiful place. So imagine, meteor hits, you know there's a tidal wave coming, it probably has one minute to kill you. You say, Ya Allah, I'm still going to plant this. I only have one minute left. I'm still going to dig. I'm still going to place it. Why? Because this is who the believer is, subhanAllah. This is the quality that the Prophet ﷺ taught us to have. That you still go ahead and do it. Do I know someone will benefit from it? Will I benefit from it? Will I allow it? Will I have time to get its fruits? Will I have time to see it grow and, and, and make money off of it? That's not my concern. My concern is being a believer. And the believer, he wants to make things beautiful. He wants to make things more lush and abundant and green. And so I'll do it even if I only have a minute to live. SubhanAllah, what a beautiful quality. And so yes, we should avoid any sort of waste or corrupting of the earth. As all the Anbiya that came with this beautiful message. Fear Allah and obey me. This is what all the Anbiya came with. They came with this idea of fearing Allah and I'm going to set the example for you. And in one particular instance, Abu Dhabi Salih he says what? وَلَا تُطِيعُوا أَمْرَ الْمُسْرِفِينَ الَّذِينَ يُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا يُصْلِحُونَ and do not obey the orders of the transgressors who cause corruption in the land and do not amend it. Don't be like those who are wasteful. What is the definition of being wasteful here? It's those people who they take and take and take from this earth. Don't give it enough time to amend itself, to do islah, to grow back. They are like a virus, taking everything and just corrupting, not in, instead of creating a natural balance with the world around them, which is what we are supposed to do. Yes. We are supposed to take what we need and not be excessive as Allah commands us. Kulu washrabu wa la tusrifu innahu la yuhibbul musrifin. Eat and drink but don't be excessive. Indeed, he does not like those who commit excess. Allah does not love those who commit excess. Why? What will be the result if we are excessive and wasteful on this earth? Well, subhanAllah, this ayah is truly one of those miraculous ayat that can only have come from a messenger of Allah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows of the future, because this ayah is truly remarkable. Allah says what? ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِ النَّاسِ Corruption has appeared throughout the land and the sea by reason of what the hands of people have earned. In other words, the human effect on this planet has corrupted the land and the sea. Think about 1400 years ago. 
How could you ever predict that human beings can corrupt the ocean? It's, it's not something you can imagine. What are you going to do? Grab a bunch of rocks and sand and throw it in the, in the ocean? It's not going to corrupt it. You're going to grab sticks and throw it in the ocean? What? How can, 1400 years ago, how could you corrupt the ocean? Nobody could ever think of something like this. And yet, subhanAllah, all these years later, now we find that there are garbage patches in the Pacific so big, they're like Texas or whatever it is, huge areas that are just full of garbage, destroying the wildlife, subhanAllah. So Allah is saying, you have been able to corrupt the land and the sea because of what you have earned. Why? Because you are being too wasteful and too greedy and destroying this beautiful planet, subhanAllah. This ayah is really remarkable in that regard. And so yes, one more point I want to make before we move on to the second khutbah, the concluding remarks. I want to say this, how do we recognize the hypocrite? This is something that every believer should be concerned about. Nifaq is the worst thing. Having hypocrisy in the heart is a disease of the heart you want to rid yourself of. It's something that is hidden and it's very difficult to know if somebody is a hypocrite or not. And so the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Baqarah, Ayah 204, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُعْجِبُكَ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا فِي قَلْبِهِ وَهُوَ أَلَدُّ الْخِصَامِ Allah says, and of the people is, he, is, is the one who his speech pleases you. He talks a good talk, right? And he calls Allah to witness what is in his heart. Wallahi, tallahi, billahi. I believe in Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Muhammad rasulullah. He swears by Allah, the greatest oaths, that he's a believer. Talks a good talk. Yet he is the fiercest of opponents. Wa huwa aladul khisam, the worst of opponents. Subhanallah. This is describing what? Nifaq. So what is, how can I know? If he's talking a good talk, and he's acting and speaking like a believer, but deep on the inside, he is completely corrupt. How can I know who is real and who is not? How can I differentiate them? Look at the very next ayah. What does Allah say? وَإِذَا تَوَلَّى When he turns away, pay attention to what happens when he turns away. وَإِذَا تَوَلَّى سَعَى فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُفْسِدَ فِيهَا وَيُهْلِكَ الْحَرْثِ وَالنَّسَلِ Allahu Akbar. وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَسَادِ Look how specific the wording is. But when he goes away, he strives, he works hard throughout the land to cause corruption therein and destroy crops and animals. Very specific language. Because the word fasad can mean corruption in multiple ways. It can mean corrupting of the earth, as in literally pollution and so forth. But it can also mean spreading corruption, spreading all sorts of uh, vile ideas. It can also imply uh, spreading, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, cheating people in business. It can, you know, fasad, corruption is very broad. But this is much more specific now. He is spreading corruption, but in addition to that, he is what? Destroying crops and animals. So, this is the quality of the munafiq. He talks a good talk, he acts like he cares, he's a believer, deep on the inside. Then when you see him go away, he could not care less about the environment around him. SubhanAllah. It's not because I say so. Allah Ta'ala says this, and you could take a look at it yourself. So may Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala make us of those who, inshaAllah Ta'ala, stay away from these qualities and we will uh, continue in the second khutbah wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam sallam kathira Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah the believer understands that subhanallah this whole world is sacred why do I say this? because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us what? ju'ilat li al-ard مَسْجِدًا وَطَهُورًا أَيْنَمَا أَدْرَكَ الرَّجُلٌ مِنْ أُمَّةِ الصَّلَى صَلَى That the whole, the whole earth has been made for me a place of prostration, a, pla a masjid, a place to pray, and a means of purification, you know, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, making um, tayammum. So wherever a man of my ummah is when the time of prayer comes, let him pray. This whole world, we should see it with this sense of reverence. The whole world has been made a masjid. Does that mean literally? No, obviously the masjid has certain rights. But the idea is what? That that same respect you have for the masjid, even though that has a higher degree, the whole earth has a degree of that, an element of that, a certain sacredness. It's a place where you can worship Allah and that makes it special. So the whole earth has to have a certain level of respect in our minds and in our hearts. This is the quality that the believer has and this is how we approach our perception of the world. You know that one out of every five or some say even one out of every four, somewhere between there, People on planet earth is a Muslim. Alhamdulillah, Islam is very, you know, it's, it's, it, the Muslim, the ummah is very huge. And yet, despite Islam's emphasis on the environment, and despite all of the ayat and ahadith that I have been citing, we don't find that Muslims are known as environmentally friendly or conscious people. We don't have that reputation. Isn't that the case? When you think of the environmentally friendly people who are on the forefront of trying to help the planet be a better place, trying to clean up all the pollution, 
do you hear the Abdullahs and the Muhammads and the, and the no, you don't hear these names. This is not, at the, this is not even within our own selves. Forget about non-Muslims. This is not the first people that you think about. We have the text, but we don't apply it. On the flip side, what you find amongst many disbelievers is what? Not all of them, of course, but many. You find that they care a lot about the environment. They take this stuff very seriously. And you can ask them, is taking care of the environment important to you? And they will say, absolutely yes. And they back it up with their actions, many of them. And then you could ask them, is it part of your religion? Many of them would say, no. Obviously, it depends on the religion, but most of the time, the answer is no. It's not really something that's emphasized by God in the scripture, etc. And then you could ask them this simple question, if it's important, why wouldn't God talk about it? Doesn't, isn't God going to talk about the things that are important? So you find that they have a different problem. They're applying it, but they don't have the text. Us, we have the text, we just don't apply it. SubhanAllah, both of us are in a lot of trouble. They should think and realize, maybe this divine text that I think is divine is not really all that special. Maybe Islam is true. And us as Muslims, the only way we're going to make them realize that is if we apply our deen properly. SubhanAllah, the believer should have a beautiful relationship with nature. In fact, there's a beautiful hadith, a very much forgotten sunnah. Anas ibn Malik uh, he says what? Asabana wa nahnu ma'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam That the rain came down and hit us when we were with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَحَسَرَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ ثَوْبَهُ حَتَّى أَصَابَهُ مِنَ الْمَطْرِ So he took off his thawb. So he allowed the water, he allowed the, the rain to hit him and pour all over him. قُلْنَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ لِمَا صَنَعْتَ هَذَا They said, O Messenger of Allah, why did you do that? Something interesting. Is this something? What, what was the reason? The Prophet simply replies, لِأَنَّهُ حَدِيثُ عَهْدٍ بِرَبِّهِ تَعَالَى Because this just came directly from my Lord. This is a gift of Allah Ta'ala. This is a rizq. This is a blessing. When the rain comes down, this is barakah. This is going to give life to the earth. This is Allah's rahmah. This is Allah's purification of the earth. So I want to feel it. How many of us do this? Most of us, let's be honest. If it starts to rain, oh, get inside, quickly get away. You know, oh, yuck, I don't want to get all wet and nasty. Subhanallah. We are completely disconnected from nature. We always want to hide inside and stay away. I think it's very important that we, inshallah ta'ala, I know it's cold weather now, inshallah we should start planning now so that by the time the weather warms up, what should we do? We should definitely have get-togethers with our, the elderly, with, with our adults as well as with our kids and go, go somewhere where we can plant trees. Get, them, get their hands in the dirt. Get them to appreciate these ayat and ahadith. Get them to, to appreciate trying to make some sort of a contribution, reminding them that everything that you plant, everything that benefits, this is a ni'mah from Allah. Allah allows it to grow, but we make our effort. Why, what, let's do this this summer, inshallah ta'ala. Let's try to plan these type of things. And in terms of on the personal level, there are certain practical things. Of course, we can talk about this a lot more. But small things like recycling, composting, reusable bottles, reusable bags when shopping, not wasting food, saving whatever extra food you have for later instead of throwing it out, taking quick showers, uh, don't throw trash on the ground. Rather, the believer is the one who picks trash off the ground. Why? You might say, oh, it's undignified. No, dignity comes from Allah ta'ala. Izzah comes from Allah. So even if you're picking up somebody else's garbage and you think, oh, that looks bad. Allah Ta'ala is the one that judges. You don't judge. I don't care about what anybody else thinks. And that's in terms of the, you could say on the small scale, on the practical sort of personal scale. What about on the public scale? We should think about using whatever influence that we have to push reg regulation towards environmentally friendly policies. We should not allow. The, be the believer is not the one who is comfortable watching companies personally profit off of destroying the environment for everybody. This is not something that the believer should be uh, okay with. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who appreciate this incredible earth that we have been given. May Allah ta'ala make us of those who represent the beauty of Islam and how the believers are those who focus and pay attention to and take care of the world around them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who can teach our children to represent their Islam by taking care of the world around them so people realize that this Islam, these people, these Muslims, they really care about the environment. They really are making the world a better place.